thanks for joining us another episode of Udrepreneur. Uh, today we're going to talk about critical thinking, right? So what is critical thinking? Well, critical thinking is making sure you have good reasons for your beliefs. I guess that sums it up. Making sure you have good reasons for your beliefs. Um, it's a way to make good long-term decisions as well. So you, you definitely want to be uh, thinking critically, especially on big decisions for sure. So, and there's a couple levels to this. I'm gonna try to organize as best I can because there's a lot of information I'm trying to get over to you. So I may have to keep referring back down here. And I got a lot of tiny prints and stuff here too. So what is critical thinking? We just talked about, right? Making sure you have good reasons for your beliefs. Um, and then it's a good way to make long-term decisions and you want to be rational. You want to uh, form beliefs uh, only when you find good reasons for it, right? And be like, well, I, I believe the Earth's flat. No, oh, wait, why do you believe that? Ah, I just think so, man. Government trying to hide it from us. All right, cool. Like, well, why do you believe that, though? Nah, I just I heard some guy talk about radio made sense. What made sense? Ah, you know, he talked about the angle, the light, and you, you know, and the way that, right? If you tell, he really doesn't know what the hell he's talking about. <laughs> he's not really critically thinking. He's just like, oh, that made sense. Cool, I believe that now. You know, instead of me, I would probably be like. Okay, well, that makes sense on that, makes sense on that, a little weird. You, know, you want to be skeptic, skeptical, you know, especially something as crazy as that. <laughs> but anyway, uh, there's a lot, of, uh, a lot of information here, so let me see if I can organize this on here for you. Uh, we can give you, an, I can do an example of, of a situation and how to critically think to decipher that situation. And... And we'll go through some of the terminology that's associated with this and some of the levels of this. So there's, I would say there's four levels, right? We can do a, a level, level one would be no thinking, which some people do that. Um, then there's like level two, which may be, um, you know, some thinking. And I'll elaborate in a minute. And then you have level three. There's really three levels, but uh, there's kind of four. Level three would be uh, critical thinking. And if you want to throw in level four, you can have overthinking. I'd rather overthink than underthink, though. So anyway, so let's do, uh, let's give an example here of Okay, let's see here. Whenever you come up with a, you have to come up with a, whatever you're trying to critically think about, let's give a situation here, let's do this. Here's an example. Okay, so we broke down the four levels of, of thinking, you know, uh, level one, no thinking, level two, some thinking, level three, critical thinking, level four, overthinking. Okay, so we know that there's four levels of thinking. So now we're gonna create, um, an argument, and an argument is a set of statements called premises, okay? And together, they compromise, uh, comprise a reason for further statement, okay? So argument is a set of statements called premises that together comprise a reason for further statement. So let's say the, the argument is, here's the example. The argument is, I don't think Randall's going to, sh well, no, let's do this. I don't think... How about, I don't believe it's gonna rain today. How about that? That's a very simple thing. All right, I don't believe it's going to rain today, okay? That is, we'll say is um, Joe, his statement, Okay, this is Joe's statement. And he said, I don't believe it's gonna rain today. Okay, so why do you think that, Joe? Well, I guess uh, for one is I hate rainy days. Okay, so you hate rainy days. All right, what else? Why, what else do you think it's not gonna rain today? Well, for two is Man, doesn't rain much during March. Okay. Doesn't rain much in the month of March. 
Okay. And I'll show you where I'm going with this. And my third reason is the weather report said it wasn't going to rain today. Okay. So the the uh, weather report says no rain, right? Okay. So Joe's statement. This is Joe's argument. Okay. And these are his premises. Okay. These are the reasons. Okay. So you have Joe's statement is I don't believe it's going to rain today. His argument is his argument consists of three premises. One, he hates rainy days. He doesn't rain much in March. And the weather report said it's not going to rain today. Okay. So that, I'm just showing you how to break down and critically think this, right? So after I got that, a, 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 first of all, a good argument uh, has premises, these right here, right? Has premises that make the conclusion likely to be true. Okay, so a good argument, um, a good argument has premises or reasons, right? That your conclusion, whatever your conclusion is, and your conclusion, your conclusion is that you don't think it's going to rain today. Right? Your conclusion is you don't think it will rain. Okay. So a good argument, which is the overall set of all these premises, a good argument has premises that make the conclusion uh, likely to be true. Okay. So a good argument has reasons basically that make what he's trying to say, uh, be true, likely to be true. All right. So and remember I had the four steps of the, the critical th uh, of thinking. Sorry. And a key part of critical thinking is, uh, you need to be able to evaluate the arguments. Okay. To determine whether they are good or bad. Uh, and whether or not the argument uh, supports their uh, their belief or their conclusion, right? Whether or not their argument supports their conclusion. So let me see how I can break this down here for you. Got to hear my next page. So we're going to do like this. Well, he has he has a premise, right? Right here. I'm going to put I'm going to put premise one and premise. I'm going to do present premise one, and your conclusion is that it's not going to rain. Not going to rain, right? All right. Well, your premise one was that you hate rainy days, okay? All right. And then you got your, I'm putting these together for a reason, your premise two and your premise three. One is doesn't rain in March much, or likely to rain in March, right? And weather report says so. But they are sometimes wrong. No rain likely, right? Because they never can completely tell you the truth, right? And then has the same conclusion. You know, conclusion is that not going to rain. It's hard to come up with an example for this. Okay, so this right here is is one argument, right? I'm gonna call this, this is argument one, and this is basically argument two, and I'll, I'll put them together for a reason. So if you look at this argument, premise is I hate rainy days, so it's not gonna rain. Okay, well, the fact that you hate rainy days has no effect on whether or not it's gonna rain. It's unrelated. It's kind of a, a bad argument, right? It's a bad reason. So uh, anyway, and then if you look at this argument, well, it doesn't rain in March and the weather report says it's more likely not gonna rain today. So that's a pretty good argument. So, I mean, you've got two different, uh, I guess not facts because, well, I guess it is a fact. If it doesn't rain much in March, then and if the weather report says that, then you have two different facts that lead that point to your argument, your conclusion, and kind of justify it a little bit, right? So if these are true, if true, then more than likely 
this won't happen, right? If this is true, it has no effect on that. If this is true, well then, yeah, more than likely it does support your conclusion. So you see I'm, I'm breaking this down into your different arguments and premises. Um, so you could also, this, or another way of breaking it down is this fact, this statement here makes it highly unlikely that that's gonna happen. This statement here, no, I mean, likely that it is gonna happen, sorry. And this statement here also makes it likely that that's gonna happen. This argument here has no effect on that, so it's, it's just opinion, right, at that point. So this is why you have to break down things, like, or for instance, uh, I'm against gay marriage. Uh, oh, why are you against gay marriage? Uh, because man and woman are made to be together. Oh, okay. Okay, that's, that's an opinion, really. Uh, I'm against gay marriage because it goes against my beliefs. Okay, I, I can understand that. Cool. It doesn't mean that he has to live by that, but I understand that that's your beliefs. You know, so, or, you know, um, it's not gonna it's not gonna rain today. Oh, why? Because uh, I hate rainy days. Makes no damn sense. No sense at all, right? Or well, because it doesn't rain much in March, and the Weather Channel said it wasn't gonna be. So I can come to the conclusion that yeah, it's more likely not gonna rain today. Uh, anyway, so when you're doing this, you kind of have uh, you have deductive and ampliative. Uh, let me write this down here. Let me get another piece of paper here. I'll just flip this over the top here. So. Write this down. Deductive and ampliative. Ampliative, uh, something like that. Right? Well, a deductive argument is when is when the argument guarantees uh, truth of the argument. Right? So deductive would be if a deductive argument is if the weather report says it's not going to rain today, well, then it guarantees the truth of my argument, right? If that's what the st statistics say or whatever, you know, or that's what your radar shows, then yeah, that guarantees that. So it's a deductive argument. An ampulative argument would be like, um, I hate rainy days. That's why it's not going to rain today. Okay, so an ampulative is it's where you make a conclusion. It can make the conclusion, which is it's not going to rain today, possible, but not guaranteed. Actually, this would not be the first one. Sorry. I'll go back and backtrack on that in a second. Not guaranteed true. So a better example of amplitude would be the, it doesn't rain much in March, right? Because if it doesn't rain much in March, then okay, well that, that makes the conclusion that it's not gonna rain possible, but it still doesn't guarantee that it's not gonna rain, right? And not that it really does either with the weather channel, but if you're looking at the radar and the weather, it's like, nope, no rain in sight, well then it's not gonna rain, right? So an amplitude argument would be where it makes the conclusion possible, but not guaranteed. A deductive one is when the argument guarantees, you know, the truth of the argument. So, uh, both can be can be good arguments too. You know, not everything's black and white. Not everything is just well, this was this because of that. So, anyway, so when you're critically thinking of things, uh, and and someone's says something and you're trying to break it down, you can break it down into these kind of there's four different levels of, of of critical thinking, and there's no thinking. I'll break this down a little bit more for you. No thinking at all. It's a straight line from emotion to reaction. Um, uh, it's kind of like almost where you you see a sad movie and you cry, right? Or you see something funny and you smile. It's instinctive, right? It's this emotion, straight line to reaction. Uh, the level two would be like, uh, there's some thinking, I haven't checked the facts down, but you know, uh, I haven't checked the facts down in the roots, but you know, when things make sense and other things don't, right? And you could maybe you need to cite sources. Um, and then level three would be critical, you know, uh, think things through to the conclusion and you don't, uh, like you don't text your ex when you're feeling lonely or something like that, right? That's not something a critical thinker would do. So that would be more emotional, like no thinking, like oh, I feel lonely, I'm just gonna call her, hey, what's going on? Or, hey, you know, so anyway, there's different levels to this. And then overthinking is just, you know, 
oh, she didn't smile at me when I looked at her. Maybe she's mad at me. Maybe she's maybe, maybe she just just didn't didn't realize she didn't smile at you. You know, They're overthinking things. So anyway, when you're trying to, and, and this also applies to big subjects too, um, uh, on everything. If people did more critical thinking and broke down and and broke the different statements out and different arguments and and the premises, and you break it down like this, you can see what's irrelevant, what is relevant, what makes sense, what doesn't make sense, and things like that. So. Anyway, hopefully this helps you understand a little bit about the process and, and, and gives you an example to follow. I had a hard time coming up with an example quickly on that. But anyway, uh, we appreciate the support as always. Uh, thanks for tuning in again for another video on, on Udrepreneur. Uh, please hit the subscribe button and the bell icon for notifications. You can follow us on LinkedIn, Twitter, Instagram, all the social media platforms, Facebook. We appreciate the support as always, and thanks for tuning in.